Hello everyone, welcome to this gloomy day. Once again, let me just show you. Look how freaking dark it is. It is insane. What is up with the spring weather? It's not very springy. <laughs> I've been putting off this video for the longest time because I knew it was about to get crazy. And then after a while I was like, does anyone even care about seeing this video? But I've got so many requests to complete the series. So today we have the 80s makeup look. Previously, of course, was 70s, so that'll be linked below as well as the playlist so you can watch all the way back to the 20s, which was the worst makeup tutorial I think I've ever done in my life. Like, I just felt revolting, but that's fine. <sighs> yeah, it's a journey. I have on my best 80s outfit. I just got this off Shein. I was like, I need some kind of like 80s puffy jacket situation, so... These are the colors we're rolling with. I'll speak a little bit about some 80s makeup trends as we go. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my hair, because... I cannot back comb my hair, it does nothing. I feel like perms were like a big thing and like fringes and I just don't have any of those things so I don't know, we'll figure it out. But let's focus on the makeup. And to be fair, I'm so excited because I feel like the next video, the 90s, like I'm so excited for the 90s. It says here, foundation, heavy foundation, very like one tone. This is a very on trend layering of foundation. The idea with the foundation was just to have like a really blank canvas because as you'll see there's a lot of makeup that goes into 80s makeup that's like bright. <laughs> the face just needs to be very monotone. Is that the word? Monotone? I don't know. Anyway, so I think today I'll go in with one of my full coverage foundations. This is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Light Neutral. And I usually use this with a sponge, but I haven't wet a sponge, so I'm just going to go in with a flat face brush and, you know, get it over with. Ooh, it's like clay. <laughs> oh my god, I just got it all on my hair. What is wrong with me? It's low key annoying, like, doing this makeup tutorial in this jacket because it's so loud. Oh my god, I'm such a klutz. How? Look <laughs> how thick it is. Oh my gosh, I used to love this foundation back when I loved full coverage. I still love full coverage, but I feel like you can get full coverage without like the heavy foundations these days. But as far as like heavy foundations do go, I still really like this one, especially with a sponge, but like literally it's gooping up in my brush. This one still looks so pretty. And now let's conceal these bad boys under my eyes. Ooh, I've got some really dark circles lately. I'm gonna use a round eye brush to blend this out under the eyes. I really should have wet a sponge. This concealer is so good, you guys. I'm gonna link everything I'm using, as always, down below in the down bar if you wanna look into anything for yourself. Okay, I'm starting to get excited for this look now. Like, I'm starting to envision what kind of colors we're gonna use. I know that navy blue eyeliner was so on trend. I feel like that carried through to the 90s. Like, I remember being in primary school and stealing my mum's, like, yeah, navy blue um, eyeliners and things and putting them on and getting in so much trouble. Navy blues and pinks, which is kind of perfect because that's what I'm wearing. Um, I'm pretty sure, was it purples and corals were in fashion as well. Yeah, I feel like first we just need to set all of this, though. The whole bunch of powder just get this put into place I'm going to use the kvd in what shade is this lucid this like yellow color it's a really good setting powder under the eyes and someone told me that because i bought this recently since kat von d beauty has been handed over and it is now kvd and i was like oh why does this still say kat von d on it apparently they just reused a lot of the packaging um, so they weren't being wasteful, which I appreciate. So I think that's why it still says Kat Von D. I did not purchase this while it was run by Kat Von D or while Kat Von D got money or anything like that. So I don't know. I thought that was interesting. And then do you know what? I've really been enjoying this Milani powder. I don't know. I used it in a full face of first impressions recently. I'll link that video below. It's the Conceal and Perfect in Natural White. But I feel like it performs well. So I'm just applying this all over and really getting a blank canvas and this is throwing me back a few years ago when I used to just wear like a mask of foundation and concealer and powder. I mean still sometimes I do but this is like matte and flat and full coverage. <laughs> but this is what the assignment requires apparently. Next this is blush. So the makeup trends of the 1980s always featured the cheekbones. So true and they always had vibrant blush. So if you think of how we contour these days they kind of did that, but with blush. 
bright bold blush to really sculpt and shape the face and it was a feature it was a focus you know like blush is definitely in trend again except very natural you know just a blushed flushed effect whereas in the 80s it was like a stripe of color so I'm a little bit nervous I'm not going to lie <laughs> and the colors were often a bright pink or even a deep plum a trend that would be laughed at today the 80s were all about color expressing yourself and uniqueness oh and then it says for brows the bushy brow was popular. A thick and natural shape was popular during the 1980s. So Cara Delevingne would have fit in quite fine. So apparently in the 80s, people just kind of left their brows to it and then just added brow gel to get a really nice thick brow. We might have to use a little bit of product. Maybe let's like start there and then we'll move on to the eyes and then the cheeks. Cause I feel like, I just want to see what we do with the eye makeup and then I'm thinking we'll blend it in with the cheeks. I'm going to use my Bobbi Brown Perfectly Defined Longwear Brow Pencil in Blonde. And I'm going to fill in the brows. And you heard them, natural thick brows were the rage, apparently. And apparently if you overplucked your <laughs> eyebrows in previous decades, then tough luck. You weren't on trend. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do for the 90s video. Because you guys know the 90s was all about the freaking plot to within an inch of their life <laughs> eyebrows. Thankfully my mum never let me do that to my brows. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my MAC brow set in Beguile. How many of my followers watching now were kicking it in the 80s? I know some of you guys that watch me are older than myself. So do any of you guys have any stories about how you used to wear makeup in the 80s? I would love to hear from you. I find that so interesting. My mum was like young in the 80s, so I don't think she really got the like full um, 80s experience as far as makeup was concerned. She was definitely more into makeup in the 90s because my mum had me in 92 and she was 18 or 19 when she gave birth to me. So she kind of like was getting into makeup around then, I suppose. Maybe just a few years before that, but I'm going to use a little bit of eye base since we're working with really bright colors. I don't know if they would have necessarily have done this, but we're just gonna pop it on. And just because I did this brow a little bit too thick, so I just wanna shape it a little bit just over the arch right here. Just keeping my natural shape. Did I say, by the way, that was the P. Louise base. Okay, so apparently the brighter the eyeshadow, the better in the 80s. Um, but if someone didn't like brights, the next runner-up was bronze. Bronze eyeshadow. But of course we're going to do like the classic 80s bright colours. It says blue, purple and pink were all the rage. But anything colourful and especially anything kind of neon. Now, the eyeshadow was like all over the show. It was like bold, bright, it was thick, it was all the way to the brows pretty much. I've got a couple of palettes here. We have the BH Cosmetics Summer in Saint Tropez, which I thought would be good for the blues and like some of the pinks maybe. And then I also have the Z palette, which has some really cool colors, I think. <laughs> and it does look like, just like from photos and stuff I've been looking at, I feel like mattes were really popular. I don't know, like I'm sure there were shimmers and stuff as well, but so many photos just have bold matte colors. So I think I'll focus mainly on that. I've picked up some shades here. So pinky purples and blues. I'm going to start with like a transition shade. <laughs> I'm going to go in with Villa, which is this like soft peach. Just kind of popping that pretty much on that brow bone and crease just to make everything easy to blend. And I think I want to keep pink on the outer edges because I think we will blend our blush kind of into that as well. Let's just see how we go. I don't have like a reference picture I'm copying, I'm just making this up. I want to take this blue, it's called Code Blue by Makeup Geek and it is the most stunning color. I'm obsessed with it. And I'm taking out my pencil brush and don't mind the weird order we're going in today. But I'm going to pop this on the lower lashes. I'm just starting here because I know I do want to do blue on the bottom lashes. I just, I'm not sure if I want to bring it on the top as well. So I just thought we'd start here and I can kind of make it up as we go and just see what looks right. And then I'm going to go in with the same brush with this lilac. This is called Hopscotch by Makeup Geek. And I'm going to pop that on the inner part of the lid like this using the same brush. I'm getting a little bit of blue on there but that's okay. That's such a nice color. Look how cool it is. I feel like it's actually starting to brighten up. Hold on, let me just adjust my lighting. Okay, now you can actually see. Look how cool that color is. Whenever I look at pictures of 80s makeup, I see a lot of color blocking. So we're kind of doing a color blocking look on the eye. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of that color and blend the edges. Sorry, there's obviously a posty. Now I'm going to take a color that's slightly more on the pink side but still kind of purplish so it will blend in. This is by Carity. I did a sponsorship for them years ago. It's called Lexis. Lexis? Lexis? And I'm going to put that on the rest of the eyelid. It matches almost perfectly to the top I'm wearing, I feel. So I think that's such a cool like 80s vibe. Just blending that up to the crease. I haven't used single eyeshadows in the longest time, you guys. I feel like on my channel for ages, all I would use was single eyeshadows, but now brands just bring out new eyeshadow palettes constantly, so I'm always using eyeshadow palettes. I never use singles anymore, ever. Do you guys prefer to use singles at home or eyeshadow palettes? I'm so curious now, because I feel like singles were everything back in the day. Yeah, I feel like I'm just going to leave the blue on the lower lashes. I think it looks cool. They're not going to end there, though. We are going to go in with Carity Shameless which is a little bit discolored because it's so old, but it's like a hot pink, so hot pink. And I'm gonna kind of layer it and also just blend with it and blend it nice and high towards the brow. So there's a slight color variation between like the pink on my lid, it's a little bit more purple, and then this one's a little bit more hot pink, which I think is fun. And then we're gonna try and do some crazy blush to kind of go with these colors, I think. I'm just going to take a clean blending brush now to try and soften the edges a little bit. I'm getting so much fallout because these eyeshadows are so bright. I don't know, it's just like showing up. And then using this blender brush and just giving it a good buff. And it's fine to bring it out because we are going to be adding blush to this whole area anyway. So that's why I've kind of gone quite far out just so it's easier to blend. I might use a little bit of that first colour villa. And add a little bit under the eye as well. Okay, but how amazing are these colors together? Seriously. I feel like I'm gonna get a little bit of patchiness because I think, yeah, these eyeshadows are probably like super expired, but I'm just layering them up so that hopefully it looks good in the end. As far as eyeliner went, I know a lot of it was quite smoky because it was kind of like the rock and roll vibe. So like black smoky fit eyeliner, like raccoon eyes, you know. Um, also colorful mascara. <laughs> So I don't really know what to do here. Like I don't think I really need smoky smoky eyeliner, but I might try a little bit of navy because I know that was in trend. Well I'm pretty sure that's what I've read. I wasn't alive in the 80s. <laughs> I found this color by Urban Decay. It is called Empire and it's kind of like right between a navy blue and a really dark purpley kind of color. So I'm going to apply this. I feel like a lot of 80s looks, it looks like they kind of put it underneath their eyes rather than on the waterline. So I'm going to do one eye and then I'm going to go in with my pants brush, if I can find it, with whatever colors on there because it's all going to match. And I'm just going to roughly kind of buff it a little just to like line. Do you see that? I'm going to do the same on the other eye. Blam, blam, blam. I like how that one turned out with a little bit like thicker on the outer corners so I'm just gonna build it and then I'm just gonna apply it maybe halfway to start on the upper lash then gently buff that so that it's smoky and smudged. See tell me why that I should have just like wiped off. I'm not going for like a particular shape just literally applying it and blending it because I don't know, I don't really know what shape was popular. If any of you guys from the 80s could let me know. <laughs> it's actually been a little bit harder for me to research 80s compared to a lot of the other decades for some reason. There's less information. Maybe it's also because there's less rules. Like I feel like makeup was starting to be more of like a self-expression and people were starting to kind of do what they wanted rather than like following like a set rule book basically like you saw a lot earlier in time where women literally had like a how-to book on how to shape your lip pencil, how to shape your brows, like you know. I feel like maybe this is when people started trying new things a little bit. There was obviously the trending colors and styles but I'm not too sure. You guys tell me. My eyes look so round I can't deal. Big old lashes, false lashes. A lot of people brought their eyeshadow very far into, which I've kind of done today, but some people even put it like down their noses and things. So optional, if you want to carry it on a bit further and more dramatic, go for it. Um, I think before I do my mascara, I will do some blush. 
and I think I might do a couple of different tones of blush. I'm thinking my beautiful Dior one, the Rosy Glow 001 Pink. Um, I think on like the higher points because I don't think there was such an emphasis on highlighting in the 80s. It was more just like blush, 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 blush. And then I think I'll find something a bit darker to really pop and go with the eye makeup. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Thinking maybe this kind of tone. This is the Max the Reindeer Grinch Kylie <laughs> collection. So I don't think you can really give it any more. But I'm going to take the small like Real Techniques brush that I set under my eyes with. I don't know if it's going to be dark enough. Kind of like adding that where I would contour just to stop. I don't really have any like dark blushes. What's the mix? This is my OPV Beauty Born to Shine. Maybe I can use like some of this color. I might even blend a tiny bit of this. So unstoppable and positive. That color is very 80s I think on my skin tone. Beautiful for darker skin tone for a wearable look but on me obviously I'm pale and it is bold which is exactly what we need right now. So I'm just going to start slow, build it up, even though we do want it to be quite bright. You can see I'm putting on my temple too, like I'm going all over this area. We do want it to be bright but I just want to make sure it's still well blended and like done well if you know what I mean. I'm not just going to like shove it all on at once. So just blend, blend, blend. I am going to fix up my eyeliner a little bit I think. I've got some like gaps. This is the thing with pencils, like I always get these like gaps in my lashes. So annoying. I've got a friend coming over tonight for dinner so this should be fun. You'll be like, what have you been filming? So I'm kind of doing like this outline. I don't know if you can see where I've done like the temples and then kind of contoured, right? And now what I'm going to do is go back in with the same color and kind of connect the outer corner of that eyeshadow like this around the temple. Kind of like that. Okay, and now we're going to stop there. I'm not going to go in with this one. This one, just don't even worry. I feel like those are better. But I will go in with my Dior now, which is brighter. And I'm going to focus this kind of in between where we'd, we would normally like blush and highlight. Which just gives it like a fun kind of ombre and multi-tonal effect. I'm going to go in with this colour here. It's like shimmery and it's light pink. And I'm going to highlight on my brow bone with this. Because I feel like it. Now just fixing up the eyeliner. I'm going to put it like in my tight line. Really rub it into the lashes and attempt to get rid of any gaps. Now I don't know where any of my mascara is that's coloured which is really weird. I did have a whole lot from Colourpop but I just don't know where I've put them. So we might just have to do black and falsies. Alright so what I did was I just used, I don't know why I just went so high pitched, Huda Beauty Legit Lashes um, and just put on a couple of coats so they looked very thick and like smoky rock and rollerish. I decided to add a little bit of that aspect into the look but I am going to use falsies and I am going to clean up the mess I've made too. I just, I don't really know what falsies to use because a lot of the falsies they did use in the 80s if they wore them were like costume ones with like rhinestones well not rhinestones but like I don't know unless there's just I don't know or like more natural styles I guess so I might use some with a little bit of detail just my interpretation these are the fangirl by EXO Beauty I'm gonna pop one on so you can kind of see the before and after all right that's a really nice subtle kind of difference it just helps to elongate my eye a little bit make my eyes look less round which I really appreciate and it just adds a little bit more volume on top because right now I feel like we're a little bit bottom heavy on the eye makeup. So I think that was a good choice. Let me pop on the other one. I'll be right back. I'm looking at some more like pictures. I feel like we can wing out the liner a little bit more. There's a lot of winged styles, whether they wing the actual eyeshadow itself or like the eyeliner a little bit. So I'm just going to draw the eyeliner directly on my brush and I'm not going to go like too full on but just enough to give it like a little bit of shape. Just dragging it out slightly like I'm barely even doing like an opaque line. It's just enough. A lot of the eye makeup's like super winged which is really cool as well. Um, which we kind of started to do but then I like blended it into the blush you know. Man this lighting 
something is really bothering me. Look at this. It's so dark outside. Even I'm like struggling to see what I'm doing. And you know what I'm going to do? Because I love nude in my waterline, but that wasn't really a thing. We're going to take a really pale, pale, pale blue and just line the waterline. This is a neon. So this is the eyeliner by LA Girl Shockwave Electric. And I'm not going to do too much, but just to kind of brighten my eye a little bit and make it really pop, make that blue pop. It's almost the same color as the eyeshadow was before we like blended everything on top. I think that was a really cool touch that really opened up my eyes. Do you know one thing I find really weird about like the Decade series is how, you know, they had the similar trends for so many years in a row when these days makeup trends change literally <laughs> almost month to month. You know, like every year there's different trends at least currently. Whereas back in the day, you know, people really did wear the same stuff for a while and not get sick of it. But I guess makeup brands put out so much limited edition makeup and kind of direct trends these days. Whereas back in the day, they probably didn't really launch new things every freaking week like they do now. Why can I not pluck the stupid hair? I really need to go in for a brow wax. You never realize how hairy your eyebrows are until you blend your eyeshadow all the way up to them and you can just see every little fine baby hair. For the lips. Apparently bold lips were the way to go. Lots of bold pinks, corals, reds. Lip liners were the best way to perfect your application. They were often darker than the lipstick as a way to emphasize the shape of the lips without overlining. Well, I'm gonna overline a little bit because it's me, but metallic lips were also a thing. Surely some candy yum yum. Oh my god, throwback. So I'm gonna use Shannon Lip Pencil by Exo Beauty. It's on sale at the moment, I'm pretty sure. Mine is a little bit blunt. <laughs> When are my lip pencils not blunt? I'm so lazy, like I just cannot be bothered sharpening. Hold on one second, I'm just gonna use some setting spray because I'm feeling so matte and dry. And then candy yum yum on top. Is this still good? No, that's so expired, but whatever. Don't tell anyone. This matches like perfectly, I could have probably just filled in my lips with the lip pencil but there we go oh my god i kind of hate it i'm gonna blot some off i'm gonna take this color here which is called sweet experience it's a beautiful like creamy light pink and just try to like create some tonal variation slightly so it's still neon but a little bit more wearable i don't know Okay, for hair, like, I don't know, I'm struggling because of my hair texture. I'm thinking, like, I found these, like, hot pink. They don't really match, but hot pink scrunchies. Scrunchies, you know, cool. And then, like, the loose sideways pony, which I feel like was also a 90s thing, but I don't know. I feel like I saw it a lot in 80s pictures, and it would work so much better if I had, like, a shorter fringe. But I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't really know what to do for the hair here, so we'll just commit. Historically correct, not too sure, but party appropriate, like, hell yeah, let's go. I'm still really happy with this makeup. <laughs> if these hoops weren't so big, they would have been, like, ideal. Okay, I feel a little bit silly. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I'm so unsure of myself every time I do one of these videos, just because the makeup style is not something I would wear today in today's real world. So like I'm always left feeling a little bit like defeated, like I did a bad job or something, but I think it's just that I'm so not used to seeing myself looking like this, if you know what I mean. I don't know. That's my look. Take it or leave it. I don't know how you guys will think I did, but I tried. Either way, I had a lot of fun creating this regardless, so I hope you guys enjoyed the journey anyway, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, I really appreciate it, and let me know what tutorials you are looking forward to, or if there's any new makeup you want me to try, let me know as always, and I do have a PR pull planned very soon, as you can see behind me, there's a whole lot of stuff, so really excited to film that for you guys, it's been a little while, and yeah, talk to you guys in my next video, where I will hopefully look... A little bit less terrifying than this. I don't know. Bye.